Good evening. Um, today is August 20th, 2019. It's about 7.03 p.m. and welcome to the Planning Commission meeting. Um, we're going to go ahead and start with the roll call, please. Thank you. Chair Mason. Here. Commissioner Biasati. Here. Commissioner Hamilton. Here. Commissioner Johnson. Here. Commissioner Lithin. Here. Commissioner Morgan. Here. You have six members. You have a quorum. Thank you. Um, Commissioner Johnson, will you lead us in the pledge, please? Pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, Go to the approval of the June 18th, 2019 minutes. Are there any um, comments or suggestions from the commissioners? No. No. no? Okay. Um, just I just had one change, um, and I don't remember where it happened. But at what, one point in the meeting, I did ask for a continuance, and I just want to make sure it's noted in the minutes. Um, I believe I believe that was noted towards the end of the meeting minutes, but we'll definitely verify it and get back to you. Okay, great, thank you. And with that said, does somebody want to motion for approval? Through the chair, I move to approve the minutes of June 18th, 2019. Thank you. All second. Okay. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? And any abstention? No. Okay. So with that, the June 18th, 2019 minutes are approved. Um, selection of officers. We need to select the new Planning Commission Vice Chair to fill the vacancy for um, Commissioner Legasse, who is no longer on the commission. Through the chair, uh, I'd like to nominate uh, Commissioner Lefton for that position. I second. All those in favor? Oh, do you accept? I'm sorry, I'm looking for my notebook. <laughs> sure, I'll accept. Exciting. <laughs> All those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposition? And any abstention? No? Nope. Congratulations. <laughs> Thanks. Great. Um, we'll move on to public comment on items not on the agenda. Are there any public comments on items not on the agenda? Nope. Seeing as how there's none, um, item number four, announcement of conflict of interest. Are there any conflicts tonight? Nope. Okay. Um, seeing as how there is none, we'll move on to the conduct of business. Tonight we're going to be looking at the San Mateo Avenue conceptual streetscape plan. And I'm not sure who's going to be giving the report. Will staff? Sure. Okay. 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 Good evening. Through the chair. Um, my name is Pamela Wu. I am the new planning and housing manager. I have the pleasure of um, serving you tonight, and I will be walking you through with the help of the consultant of the San Mateo Avenue uh, streetscape. Um, conceptual plan. So what's before you is the agenda for tonight's meeting. Staff will give a very brief presentation of how the plan came about um, and it will be followed by the consultant's presentation in more detail of the, what the plan um, covers. Um, you'll find out that there is one pretty copy that's being shared among you that has the pretty color and then the final selection of paper. Um, and there's also one copy available for the public if you wish to kind of take a look at it as well. After the consultant's presentation, we'll open questions from the Planning Commission and we'll also take public comments from the public. And at the end, staff recommends the uh, Planning Commission to receive the report provide feedback so that we can forward your comments to uh, council on these um, into the next meeting in September. Before we launch into it, the San Mateo Avenue conceptual streetscape plan serve as a design guideline and the goal is to beautify and enhance the downtown area along San Mateo. The objective for tonight, as I mentioned, is for you to receive the report, to take the public comments, and also to provide feedback. Um, please keep in mind that there's no formal action to take tonight, so you, you don't need to approve or adjust um, of the plan, but merely to take the report. A little background on the San Mateo uh, streetscape plan. As you will remember, the night uh, 2009 general plan 
envision the downtown area to be the heart of the city. One of the specific implementation is to beautify and enhance the pedestrian, um, the bicycle, bicyclist and the motorist um, experience of the downtown. And to follow up with the TCP, um, there's a specific implementation also asking the streetscape plan to be prepared. Early on this year in January, council allocated $125,000 to retain WRTSR consultant to prepare the plan. And it took about eight months to work with the consultant to come up with this conceptual idea to finalize with the content and to have a draft that's before you today. Um, the scope for the streetscape plan is limited to the public right of way only. Um, so this will be only the public property in addition to the Centennial Park and also the Posey Park. It does not include any improvement to the building facade or the private property. And at this time, unfortunately, the city has not identified any resource in terms of funding to implement the plan yet. As this was uh, laid out in the staff report to you in May, um, the first task is to provide an analysis and a preliminary feasibility of how the plan can come to light. And we then, staff has determined what sort of CEQA determination the plan would need. Uh, when council takes an action to adopt a plan, council will be recommended to also um, adopt a categorical exemption for the plan. Step three will um, include community outreach. Um, we'll go into the next slide, which talks about a number of community outreach event that took place, which involved input from a community that got into the plan itself. And the last task is to prepare the plan itself that's in front of you today. This slide gives you a summary of all of the community outreach that has happened today. There were three meetings in March and three meetings in May for a total of six community outreach meetings. So that will be the end of my presentation, which will be followed by the consultant's presentation. Thank you. Can you hear me? Great. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be back here, as it always is. Uh, I'm Jake Tobias with WRT. I'm a landscape architect. Uh, WRT is a landscape architecture, urban design, and planning uh, firm out of San Francisco. And this is this type of work is one of the, the backbones of our practice. Um, and it's just always a pleasure to come. Almost every meeting, I try to plug one of your local businesses. Uh, so I just had a wonderful, uh, what was it called? Old Chicago pastrami sandwich. I'm not gonna name the business because I understand there's two delis that I don't wanna favor one. <laughs> but anyway, I feel very well fortified for this meeting. I appreciate, I appreciate what your town has to offer. Um, <clears throat> and I always say too that just as soon as we got down here uh, and looked at San Mateo Avenue. I think a lot of the people in the community see all the warts and the problems and the perception of, um, of some, some blight and some lack of maintenance of some of the private properties and we've heard all of this. But what we saw was really a thriving downtown. Uh, there are relatively few vacancies. There's people there on the weekends. We had one of our workshops on a, on a beautiful weekend afternoon. Uh, kids and 
old people, we have, an, we have a rule we call the 8 to 80 rule, is that a, and everybody in between, and young old people and mature children and all of the above. Um, you know, we have this, this saying that we like our streets to ha follow the 8 to 80 rule, which is that an 8-year-old can walk safely on it and an 80-year-old can walk safely and comfortably on it as well. And, and your town shows the need for that because there's just such a, a range of people using the street as well as a range of ethnicities and uh, cultures represented. It's just, it's just a wonderful place. So I always like to start off with that perspective. A um, little bit hard to see there on the screen, but just an overview of where we are in the schedule. We're right towards the end. We're at the second to last meeting. Uh, we've completed all this work, uh, community outreach, um, drafts of the plan, a lot of input from staff, from stakeholders, from the public, uh, from you. And this will be uh, I understand there will be two more, actually it's not shown here, but there will be a city council uh, study session and a city council final meeting after this one to adopt the plan. Just an overview, a lot of this is review uh, of what you saw the last time I presented here and what the community's seen at all of the meetings. Uh, but the main goals, and this is all based on community input that we received, um, act, I won't read every word here, but activation, greening, Beautification, safety, wayfinding, and identity were the main uh, goals. This is a list of um, items that were developed and improved subsequent to input from you, uh, the Arts Commission, the Parks and Rec Commission, um, who else? Uh, various stakeholders and city staff. So again, I don't want to go through all of this, but um, but but this is this is a, a, an just to give you a sense of of how much we actually have developed this plan in in uh, response to very specific comments that that all of those groups had. So I'll just jump in to uh, an overview of the design. I think that the goal of this this presentation is to hear your feedback, and I think we're at the you know the end stages of this. So I'm I'm anticipating some pretty uh, detailed feedback because the general goals, um, the general concept, has has gone through that process. So I'm going to jump into some details. Um, the plan kind of describes. Uh, as an overview, a set of baseline furnishings and improvements, and then a series of special places. Um, with an eye towards implementation, and, this, and the, our, the final slide of this whole presentation, we'll get into detail about this, we're aware that funding and a budget has not been identified. And so this plan um, is meant to provide flexibility in terms of how much of it actually gets developed depending on available funding. And so we've prioritized um, elements and then, and then there are some elements that are lower priority or you could think of them as longer term uh, projects. And I'll describe that in, in more detail towards the end of the presentation. But what we do feel, and this is again all from community input, that these baseline improvements are, are kind of the minimum um, that would that would qualify as a successful implementation, and then the other uh, aspect of these baseline improvements is they set a character tone and aesthetic tone that <clears throat> this, that hangs together um, and starts to create a unique uh, sense of place for this for this corridor. So I'll remind you that um, this came out of community input. You know, one of the things I mentioned is how diverse the street is. It was hard for us to come in and identify an obvious character. Sometimes you come into a community and it's all historic Victorian buildings. You kind of know what the streetscape wants to look like. Other communities, um, 
might mostly have been built in the last you know, 20 years or 50 years, and it all looks pretty modern, and you know what that's going to look like. Here we had to really rely on the community to hone in on what that, that desired character was. And um, some of the words that really came out of that process were that it wanted to be simple, uh, it wanted to be elegant, now elegant in, in the sense of refined, not in the sense of fancy, that was a distinction that was made. Um, it wanted to be fairly contemporary, forward-looking. And then there was sort of a theme that started to emerge about the transportation uh, history and, and existing sort of uh, relationship with transportation. The street itself is, is, a, is a transportation connector. It's got the new Caltrain station. Um, and then also just looking a little beyond that towards the airport transportation history that's already described in some of the murals and the, I think the mosaic out there has some, some transportation themes. So we, we abstracted that into these sort of um, movement, these, these sort of forms that, that evoke movement. Um, just a look in detail about how some of these elements would be located along the street. Um, Oh, I would go back. I just want to go back to one other point. Uh, it was very much a consensus that greening was a was a priority. So, in addition to all the hardscape elements and that sort of transportation theme and the simple uh, contemporary look, 100% um, absolutely, this project needs to plant trees, a lot of trees, plant them in the ground, make sure they're big, um, and so that was really a focus. So looking into a little more detail about how these elements might be laid out, um, again, just really maximizing the, the trees. I think we're looking at approximately a 40-foot spacing for trees, which is um, you know, fairly, fairly tight spacing. These would be large trees. Taking advantage of all the existing bulb outs that are there. So that's something that a lot of communities have to work really hard to get into a street. You've already got them. Uh, there's a lot of assets out here, I should mention, in terms of the scale of the street, the existing pedestrian-friendly crosswalks, the bulb outs. Those are all things that we wanted to maintain. And then um, some of these mid-block bulb outs really are an opportunity to get some even larger trees and to, and to enhance the ground plane with additional planting. Um, bike racks were important. There's almost no bike parking out on the street now. There are a couple of racks at Posey Park associated with the Caltrain station, some bike lockers. Other than that, there's nothing. People are locking their bikes to whatever they can find. Um, so that was a priority. Additional lighting is a huge priority. That was a comment we heard over and over again, and, and I'll, I'll describe that in a little more detail. And then new uh, actually additional benches, uh, especially for um, people who might need to rest more often as they're walking down the street, some of the um, senior members of the population or parents with children who, who need to sit down. So seating was a priority. Um, new uh, trash receptacles are actually potentially going to happen as a very first implementation. I think there's some funding available for that in the very near future. So we've added those carefully, and those could be implemented very soon. And then, so that's sort of what we would describe as the baseline. And then there's a whole layer of where can we find opportunities for unique and artistic expression. Um, it was important, given the kind of eclectic nature of the existing street, um, all of the variety of architecture, signage, different shops, that Generally, and I'll go back, this baseline be a unifying element in its simplicity. Think of sort of a modern approach that, that what stands out about these things is actually that they're not doing too much. Um, they're really tying all of this variety together. So it was important that when we look at these unique and artistic elements that the whole street doesn't become a cacophony of stuff. And so we were pretty deliberate in identifying um, where, uh, where the unique things would happen. And so um, 
the, the opportunities for that that arose were uh, special lighting features associated with benches and seat walls primarily, uh, unique paving in certain places. Um, the, uh, one of the main locations for that would be the paseos, which are the, um, which are the alleys. We're calling them paseos, but alley might be a more under, a common term that connect the street to the surface parking, and I'll talk about the importance of that in a minute. Lighting in the Paseos as well was identified. Uh, artistic crosswalks. This is an opportunity maybe to do some unique paint in the crosswalks or other materials. It could also be special paving. Um, again, the lighted bench with the similar to the lighted seat walls, and then various opportunities for special lighting. I'll, I'll get into more detail there. So again, some relatively focused opportunities for interesting, unique expression. Uh, this slide is an overview of how that would look on the entire street. You get a sense of the rhythm of the trees. Um, this scale, that's, that's the main thing that jumps out. We were very careful about how the street gets used. The big priority was to maximize the opportunities for sidewalk seating. Uh, with all the restaurants and cafes, and, and uh, you already have a lot of sidewalk seating, for example, at the Starbucks. Um, we wanted to maintain as much of that sort of furnishing zone as possible while maintaining the, um, the necessary uh, uh, walkways that go through. So that was, a, that was an emphasis on the, of the project. This is just gets into a little more detail on street trees. We've identified recommended species. Um, does anybody, is anybody here a tree geek and want to go into that? <laughs> I can skip over it unless there's specific questions. But suffice it to say, these are big shade trees. That was the main goal. Another goal here was to provide trees that could actually accept the seasonal lighting. That was something that a lot of people wanted to see. So the, the um, main tree here is deciduous and has a very open branching structure that would look wonderful in the wintertime with, with lights on it. Um, they are also obviously appropriate for this climate. Um, questions always come up about sidewalk damage due to trees, and the short answer is providing enough root zone right around the base of the tree is the main uh, way to prevent that, so large tree grates or large tree wells, and that's in here. And then as additional optional ways of getting even healthier trees, we go into some p uh, potential subgrade underground uh, methods of improving the tree's uh, uh, soil. Additional <laughs> greening opportunities. So um, we did have one conversation that with another consultant that is currently doing your stormwater um, green infrastructure plan. And there's plenty of opportunity on this street to, uh, to add green infrastructure. It's not required by the stormwater ordinances. Uh, what is, I should say this, what is required is actually fairly easy to meet the requirement. Um, and so we've described some over and above uh, optional uh, stormwater infrastructure improvements, green infrastructure. One of the main opportunities is at um, Genvian where there's currently a very, very large turning radius that could be very much tightened up, and, and there happens to be a storm drain right there. Um, that could be a wonderful opportunity. And then on the lower left, on the lower right, sorry, uh, there's a diagram of some of this additional uh, green infrastructure that actually is underground. It's, uh, the generic term is suspended pavement, and you can put uh, permeable paving on top of that. Um, and so those are recommendations that can treat stormwater and also really maximize the uh, health and longevity and even just the size of the street trees. Additional greening opportunities is just to, to take the existing bulb outs that you already have and remove pavement and add planting. So there's some uh, corner bulb outs where you've got quite a bit of room there and then the mid-block bulb outs as well that could really become little uh, opportunities for gardens, um, seating at each of those where there isn't seating now. You could really imagine this, this street becoming a lot greener.
Um, this is just one slide that just talks about what I already I mentioned in terms of all of these character elements. So the top line, again, is that baseline of furnishings and then the artistic elements and lighting that you can see. There's another option there for the um, artistic crosswalk that I particularly like. It's in LA on the lower row. Lighting, I mentioned it earlier. It's definitely uh, worth repeating. That was a refrain we heard over and over again. There's just poor lighting out there. Um, and our photo, we did actually do a photometric analysis uh, with some light meters. The, the civil engineer that we had on our team um, went out and, and did that, and, ha and it's included in an appendix in the, in the final document. But basically, you can see the top row is what you've got now, the top, top plan view, and then below that is what we're proposing, and it's essentially doubling the number of light fixtures out there. And then in addition to that, I'll repeat, there's the opportunities for additional interesting artistic lighting. Uh, one of the comments that really influenced us came out of our last planning commission meeting. I forget which commissioner mentioned it, but there was this idea of having more flow, I think was the word that was used in the lighting. The opportunity that we identified is really to associate that with seating. So seat walls and benches, as shown here, could have uh, sort of linear lights that run along the, the base of the seat walls or under benches. And the intention is that as you look down the street, you really do pick up that kind of line of lighting. Um, at the same time, there was a lot of input from city staff about making sure that this kind of lighting is maintainable, isn't going to get vandalized. So I think this is a balance where there are uh, very durable LED fixtures available now that can be kind of tucked into uh, grooves and slots in the seat walls or under the benches. And hopefully there's a balance here um, if this aspect is implemented between having that thing, that flow and that unique sense, but also being reasonable about um, long-term maintenance of, of these elements. And then looking at some of these special places, and this is uh, kind of in order of priority. The importance of these paseos can't be uh, overstated. Um, it's an integral part, not only of creating character, um, creating more light and usability, and, and, and you know, at night these might be scary places. There's all of that. Um, there are opportunities for art. The public and the Arts Commission were really interested in that aspect of the Paseos. Um, so it's all of that, but in addition to that, we see these as a critical component of your parking strategy. We heard plenty about how people uh, feel that there's not enough parking out here. Um, the parking management plan was completed soon after we got started on this project, and we're following that plan's recommendations. Um, and basically, there, there is a really good parking resource right off of the street, uh, the surface parking lots. They do get well used at peak hours, but they, but they are there, and they are, um, they're not full. They're well used, but they're not completely full. And so signage, which I'll talk about in a minute, and then also just creating, just really identifying these paseos as a connection to that parking. This parking is not far from your destination. Uh, and to really make that point with design and with light and with art and with seating in the paseos and with special paving, um, and then importantly, the signage, which, which we'll talk about in a minute. Uh, so that's probably the most important of what we're calling the special places. Uh, we also looked at Posey Park. Um, I don't think I need to repeat what people don't like about Posey Park. Um, we're trying to address those issues here by mainly bringing some more green back into it. I'm embarrassed to say it was actually kind of late in our process that I saw a picture of what Posey Park looked like before the Caltrain overpass was built. And I realized that it really was at one time a big green thing. I think there were redwood trees in it maybe. I don't know that it was even much of a usable park, but it was a green gateway. So we talked a lot about gateways and we'll get at some 
structures that, that represent the gateway, but also imagine if Posey Park had that real green big tree presence again. Um, other elements of this design are to pull people towards the street, uh, eliminate or reduce that sense that there are hiding places, um, and then activate it. So there's a, a place uh, where you could pull up some food trucks or carts. Um, that could be a very active, well-used place during rush hour as people are coming and going from the, the train station. And so there's some program ideas. We don't know necessarily if um, which of these would be implemented. I think this deserves more study, but you could have a lawn there. Uh, you could have movable seating. Um, again, I mentioned the food trucks and other, other types of programming. The other things to mention are how do we handle this, the old the fountain that's not working. So uh, the consensus there was to turn that into, into planting. But I think even more importantly, the big gray wall is a real opportunity to do something either with color or art. Uh, we, we suggested the notion uh, in this rendering of just something beautiful being done on that wall. And then the third of the special places is the Centennial Plaza. We didn't take the design quite as far uh, with this. Again, it would be part of another design process to really, um, to really uh, bring this along. But we did think a lot about the programming and got a lot of community input on this. I'll, I think this is, this is a repeat from uh, the last time I presented here, but I'll remind everybody that uh, one of the big ideas that came from the community was a playground. Uh, there's really not enough for kids to do along here, and so that was, that was a great piece of input. Also, just the performance space aspect was very much uh, appreciated and, and mentioned by the community many times. So there's a few different ways that that could be laid out here. Uh, it's just the first, first, literally the first step in, uh, in a design process, but it gives a sense of how big these spaces might be, what might fit. You can actually fit quite a bit of program into this plaza. Wayfinding and gateways, I actually, um, this slide doesn't do it justice. I would turn your attention to the actual report. Uh, there were some questions about the design intent here, and I just want to explain it clearly. Uh, we really looked at some very classic modernist, with a capital M, signage design. The intent is that it's very simple, very easy to read. Again, that sense of elegance, not necessarily in terms of fancy, but in terms of clean, pure. Uh, and so that's the intent, and the report has a couple of other potential iterations that have some more um, design embellishments, but very subtle. Um, again, this would need further study, um, but th that is the intent. And there's really um, these five different types of signage we're proposing, actually a sixth if you count the gateway. So there's vehicular signage, that is to direct drivers to San Mateo Avenue, really is the central business district. Driving in tonight from San Francisco, I noticed that you do have on the highway, on, on the 101, on the off-ramp, or before you get off the exit, um, there is the standard Caltrain, Caltrans sign that says downtown uh, central business, San Bruno Central Business District, or whatever it says. But once you come down San Bruno, and right before you uh, get to the Caltrain overpass, there's really nothing. I don't know if I'm supposed to go to San Mateo Avenue or keep going straight, so that would be one key location for a simple directional sign in the median, and so that's the one on the, on the left. And there are other places where that might be appropriate, um, indicated on the map. The other type of sign that I think is worth mentioning, again, just goes to the parking uh, question and just having plenty of signage that directs people to that off-street uh, parking. And then pedestrian-oriented signs um, for example, once you've parked in the parking lots behind buildings, we want to make sure people know where that paseo is and know how to get, uh, get back onto the street. It could be a little disorienting to find your parking space and then you get out of your car and you're not sure where to go. And then finally, these gateways. So on the uh, lower right here is a small gateway element that could be implemented at the paseo. And I believe the next slide is about the gateways for the north and south. And uh, 
again, a few options here. Uh, one, the most favorite um, that was identified by the community of our precedent images did have this sort of arch going across the street. And so three of the four options are different iterations of that. Uh, and I can go into more detail about the design thinking if there are questions about that. Uh, one of the four options, the upper right, doesn't go all the way across the street. So we just wanted to keep that open as an option. There may be engineering reasons or cost reasons or uh, any number of reasons to go with that option. It may just be preferred through a through, uh, future design process. And then at night, again, these would be really important opportunities for the lighting aspect. Um, again, just the sense that this place should be a nighttime activity place as well as a daytime, and that these gateways really, you could imagine them not focusing so much on the nighttime aspect of the design. I think it's really important to emphasize that that should be a critical part of the uh, final implementation. Okay, so that, I don't know how much time I just spent, but that, that was a very quick overview of the design. Um, this is sort of the ranking and the implementation aspect, which is towards the end of the document um, before the appendices. Um, again, we don't know how much funding will be available, so we tried to break this down into logical chunks, if you will, and we call them tiers. Um, the first tier is really that baseline project. So this slide is a simplification of the, um, of the version that would be in, in the final document. But basically, I don't know if you can read it very easily. I can't read it from where I'm standing, so I'll look at my printout. Um, so that top tier baseline project we think would be about 6.3 million. This includes, I just want to mention, a 35% contingency, um, which is a pretty big number, you know, that's a pretty big percentage, very standard for a conceptual design. Um, so you can do the math, but that 63,000 includes the 35%, so we think it'll be there or under that amount. Um, and that includes side si basic things like sidewalk replacement. Um, I didn't mention this earlier, but there are required there will be required bus stop improvements uh, to bring those up to code. Street trees, as I mentioned, is obviously a baseline. The lighting, the basic furnishings, the signage, and some uh, planting and irrigation that would happen um, in certain areas. Not all of it, but some of it. The second tier is an additional 3.1 million, so that would be a total of 9.4 for the whole project. That's within a number that we've heard being tossed around for a project like this. Uh, so we really think it's very reasonable to think that the first two tiers could be completed. Um, and that includes a few more, um, how should I say, I don't want to call them embellishments because they are very important. So some permeable paving to increase the stormwater, um, you know, the green infrastructure stormwater management aspect, that Genevian Avenue intersection, so that's one of the biggest opportunities for greening and stormwater management. The suspended pavement, as I mentioned, that's that um, that will, again, prioritizing the street trees and the size and the health and longevity of those, and also some stormwater uh, management there. The gateways, uh, probably the first thing on the list that I'm mentioning, that's really that extra level of artistic and unique expression um, striping improvements, and then additional planting, greening, and the paseo improvements. So again, as I mentioned, of those special places, the paseos were the most important, so we fit those under the tier two. Um, I'm not going to go through all of this, but basically tiers three and four are additional. There's two additional things that are, uh, are sort of major changes, the Centennial Park and Posey Park. We did hear from the Parks Commission that from a parks planning point of view for your city, there may be other parks priorities, which we are not familiar with because we're not, we, we, you know, I didn't familiarize myself with, with the bigger picture in terms of parks. Um, but those, um, you know, the, the Parks Commission did say that they, you know, 
These are great ideas. They're not necessarily the most important park improvements for the city. So that's why we put them in the lower tiers. The other way to think about that is those could be implemented as future phases. They're not sort of integral with the rest of the streetscape. And then other than those two important spaces, the rest of tiers three and four are some additional artistic expression kind of add-ons, if you will. Uh, I don't want to minimize the potential impact of those, but they're just not as critical, obviously, as the other elements. Um, the other thing is this could easily be continue, I would, I would say that all of these elements should, should continue to be developed through the next phases of the design process. So I should have mentioned early on in my presentation that um, this is a conceptual plan. It's not describing what will get implemented. There's a lot of work still that would need to be done on the design. Um, I think the wording of this is more articulate in the document itself describing the purpose of the plan, but I just wanted to be clear that after this, you would go into a schematic design uh, which could actually continue to include all of these elements for further um, uh, cost estimating. There will be design development, which is really refining all the materials. For example, um, I think it's important to mention that the benches that we showed, the light fixtures we show, the exact paving materials, the intent is not to define those. The intent is to give a design direction. There are higher cost benches and lower cost benches that would still um, carry the basic intent. In fact, in the plan, we've got a couple of options for each of those, a couple of options for lighting fixtures. So that would all happen during a design development phase. Um, and so what I mean to say is that this is a, is a working document, the prioritization and the costing. You may find that something that's in tier four happens to fit into the budget uh, even if you're not implementing everything in tier three. So these are sort of a kit of parts, if you will. Um, but the intent is to begin to prioritize things so that at least given funding realities, there's sort of a record of the community's consensus about what was important. And with that, I think I can turn it over to questions. Thank you, Chair, uh, through the Chair, if I may. Um, before you open the public hearing, I just want to have a couple housekeeping items. There are speaker cards available by the front table, so if you would like to address the commission, please fill one up, and you can give it to me, and I'll announce your name before the commission can call you. And also, um, since the release of the staff report, staff has received three public comments, including one phone call, um, and we can provide that detail to you if you are interested. Um, lastly, we have city staff here available if you have any questions for us. Thank you. We'll go ahead and open this up for, for public comment. And I think while, while we're waiting, did you want to maybe just highlight who the three comments that you received? I'll turn that to um, Rucha. Okay, great. Thank you. And the call. So I, uh, I received the first phone call um, that uh, the applicant, uh, sorry, the interested uh, community member talked about um, the importance of uh, maintenance on uh, the San Mateo Avenue. She emphasized upon uh, the importance of uh, maintenance, um, especially um, sidewalk sweeping and uh, power washing. Mm -hmm. uh, she wa she's the uh, owner of a bar and a restaurant there, so she emphasized the importance of maintenance. Uh, I got two emails from one um, from the same person um, on the same day. Um, she talked about having uh, done a lo lot of um, plans related to the downtown and uh, how um, uh, she actually posed a question how this was different than the downtown and um, the details of uh, the, the previous plans that were um, 
uh, done previously. So uh, the, the details of the emails are attached in the packet, uh, so you could uh, review those as well. So that were the three comments that we received um, after the staff report was prepared. Thank you. And I think we do have some public comments. Do we have anybody else here for public comment? Yes. We have one, uh, Dave and Nigel. Hi, Chair Nigel. David Nigel, 520 Skyline, Chairman of the Bicycle and Pedestrian Advisory Committee and Park and Recreation Commissioner. I've heard this, I think, five times now. And uh, I was one of the 50 people that did the initial walkthrough up and down San Mateo Avenue. I just want to compliment the uh, consultant, Mr. Tobias and his colleagues, and our own staff. They really try to have an outreach that get the ideas of what the people wanted on San Mateo Avenue. I don't have to tell you, our downtown doesn't compare to our neighbors. Um, and I, for one, would really like to see it improved. And as you saw the presentation tonight, we have that opportunity. Um, and um, I just uh, was in Redwood City over the weekend, and the way they have their set up with restaurants and all kinds of things, it was so vibrant, and I hope that our city can do that. In our history, I've lived here since 1959, and um, in the 60s and 70s, San Mateo Avenue was a vibrant place with upscale uh, dress shops and men's shops, photography, you name it, it was here. Ross started, was one of their first stores was here on San Mateo Avenue. Then it kind of went downhill. And uh, I can tell you that the, the staff and the uh, consultants really did a good job. I base that on our new $50 million rec center that we had to go through the same process and how they outreached. And to have 50 people at the first walkthrough was unbelievable. And the pop-up at the Citibank uh, place was also an opportunity for people. Unfortunately, we should have had a lot more people, but that's the nature of uh, city government. Thank you. That's all I have. Okay, thank you. Is there any other public comment? Oh, I guess there's one more. Linda Holman. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So um, I'm a three-year San Bruno homeowner and uh, 50 years in San Mateo County. And I just wanted to say that I um, am very excited about the San Mateo Avenue streetscape plan. I am two blocks off of San Mateo Avenue and I, just, I would just love to see something like this, an improvement like this in San Bruno. I think that we need more economic development down there. I think we have a great opportunity to improve on all the restaurants, the food places. Uh, my son is 30 years old. He loves to go down there and eat. Roma's uh, Delicatessen is closing down. Something across the street closed down. We love to go to West Coast Cafe, but it needs to be improved, and it's an excellent opportunity to improve the economic development of San, San Bruno. So I think that it's gonna be very hard for locals to sustain the businesses on San Mateo Avenue as well. We need to attract the people from the other towns. In San Mateo, uh, you know, downtown San Mateo, we've seen the improvement there. Redwood City, those were great points. We really need to have something like this in San Bruno. I think that, that having people come into our community to eat on that street with this look, would be, an, again, our economic development opportunity is sitting right here, and I think our return on investment would be well worth it. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, go ahead. I didn't fill out a thing, but I, I really just got up here to speak first to clear up maybe any misinformation. Rome is just changing hands, it's not shutting down. Yeah, good, yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Um, you, you, but I, you can Stephen introduce Seymour. yourself if Stephen you'd like, Seymour. but yeah. it's not required. Stephen Seymour, sorry about that. Um, 
But I do also want to just echo what the two people before me said. Um, it was a great process. Um, we were at, Sandra and I were at most, if not all, of the meetings so far. We've been asking, we've lived 25 years almost uh, on Mastic Avenue. And we've been asking for uh, something to be done on San Mateo Avenue for a long time. Um, there is a, a hefty price tag on this, and I hope that really doesn't get in the way. We've got to find a way to improve that downtown corridor. Otherwise, it's, it's, it'll be difficult to have happen uh, what we'd all like to see, which is more development, more economic development. You've got to, you've got to uh, put down the, um, the beginnings. You have to entice those people to come in and do what we want so that we can turn this avenue into what I think everybody in San Bruno would like for it to be. I'd like to put another hat on real quick. Um, as uh, San Mateo Arts Commissioner, um, we are working on our strategic plan and we are very interested in uh, doing what we can to support the arts. And this is one area that we would love to see more art uh, for our county and for our city. So thank you very much, I appreciate it. Thank you. Is there any other public comment? Seeing as how there's none, go back to the commissioners. Any comments, questions? the chair you know when I hear there was well I so, certainly support growth and improvement on San Mateo Avenue it's I'm a resident for 43 years and uh, there's nothing more exciting to think that we would have an area that's vibrant exciting and to bring community together to have unity and activities that just create um, relationships ongoing for San Bruno young people need a place to go and uh, and create memories and families need a place to go to um, interact with one another. So it, it's exciting to me. Uh, I did read one of the letters from um, that came through and I think there's a little frustration that comes through uh, indicating that we have been listening to this kind of growth for a lot of years. And when I hear that there isn't a budget yet established, it's like, it, it, I don't know what to think about that. You know, it, it's, uh, I love the idea of vision, I love the idea of planning, I love the idea of creating, but if we don't put together a plan to make it happen, all it is is another, another time of, of ideas. And I think that we need to go beyond that. And I don't know, I, I don't have any direction at this moment, but I need to, I wanted to voice the fact that one of the letters that did come in, when they said again and again and again, I had to take a breath and say, I've been there, I've been part of this community to see those things. So I think it's time to say, let's get our, our plans in place and make this happen. Thank you. Uh, through the chair, um, good evening everybody. Um, uh, first of all, I'd like to thank uh, Jake and Joss and Rivka and the whole R w WRT team, uh, design and planning, uh, for team and our own planning staff for all their hard work in coming up with this plan and for incorporating the views of everybody into, into the process. Uh, I like the overall plan and have just a few comments. Uh, there's parking meters shown in some spots and I, I take it that these are just examples. Uh, that they will be wherever their parking is available, okay? Um, <clears throat> I love all the trees at grade level with the large gratings and the permeable paving that will help our aquifer. I hope that this paving will not only be in the sidewalk strip but also in the parking stalls too, when we get to that. I think that the suspended pavement is a great idea but I think it would be expensive to create it. I like the fact that all the planting would be drought tolerant um, and I think any cast in uh, situ concrete uh, if it could be in San Diego buff color with a soft finish or something like that, it would be much more attractive than just plain gray. Um, I like the idea of having the seating walls and benches precast in a factory setting, which I believe would save time and money and where there's a better quality control on the finishes. I hope that these items would incorporate uh, skateboarding devices too. Um, I've seen some of these that look like fallen leaves uh, planted on the edges of the, the seating and they look very effective, they're very effective. They're done in bronze and I, I thought they looked very well. 
Uh, of course, any improvements or repairs or alterations to underground services would have to be done in tandem with this work to try to prevent disturbing the new work in the foreseeable future. Finally, I, I'm sorry, but I don't like any of the three designs for the Centennial Park. Uh, the Centennial Park is right in the center of downtown, and it should be a focal point where people can congregate, meet, or just sit and ponder or read, maybe eat their lunch. I envisage that because of the subterranean problems that exist, this, that whole area would be paved over as a plaza. Planting would be difficult, so maybe we could re reuse some of the large bowl-type planters that are uh, in the street at the moment. Uh, I have them around the perimeter of the area, and then have benches and lighting in between. It would be nice to have a fountain there, as running water as always seems to be a, have a calming effect. I think that there should be a nice brick wall or a stone-faced wall at the back of the space um, to screen off the parking lot with an opening into the course for people to get through to the parking lot. We could have a raised concrete platform in that area, maybe about 10 foot by 10 foot and 18 inches high where people could sit around it. Uh, people could, um, uh, that could be used for someone doing speech or the musical group or performing arts, whatever. Uh, there should be a PowerPoint built into it for uh, sound systems and so on. Close to this, we should have a flagpole and uh, for flag raising ceremonies, and maybe two more flagpoles for the California and San Bruno flags. We should leave as much open space in the middle as possible for children to run and play. I think, I think that's all kids need is a safe place to run around and play. The plaza could have a, a, maybe a small farmer's market there at times. It could be a very enjoyable and peaceful place to congregate or meet people. And many people have expressed their unhappiness with that area when we were doing the surveys and the walkthroughs and so on. So if there's not enough funding for the whole scheme at this time, perhaps this space could be addressed as a standalone project to start with. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner? Uh, through the chair. Um, I've got a couple of, of just general comments and then a couple of questions. Um, the uh, first of all, I want to um, echo uh, a lot of the previous comments regarding the um, regarding the uh, WRT and your staff. Um, I was at that. I was my wife and I were two of the 50 who came to that initial walk, walk down San Mateo Avenue, and um, I just really appreciated the focus on the positives. The same way that you opened your comments tonight, um, the. The staff really was looking at what what are what's good about San Mateo Avenue and how can we build on that and not just focusing on what's not so good. Um, at one point, one of the uh, one of the staff members commented, "It's like what downtown? What down? I've never seen a downtown where you can look up up out of the area and have a mountain view, and then turn around and look out the other side and have another mountain view." And I never even realized that. I was too busy focusing on the, on the closed up businesses and all, this, on the, all the other things that are negative about it. I didn't even notice it. So that, just that energy, I think, has really permeated this whole project, and I um, really appreciate that. Um, the other comment I want to make uh, kind of builds on what Commissioner Johnson was saying earlier regarding some of the comments we received about uh, past efforts to do this and how, they've, and how they failed. And, um, Past failure doesn't mean we're never going to try again. That's ridiculous. Um, it, it's yes, there's no fu no funding has been established, but how do you go ask for funding unless you know what you want and you know how much that's going to cost? So that this process gives us that information. So then we settle on something. We know what the what the price is, and then we go find the money for it. You just have to do it that way. You can't just go get a blank check from somebody. No one's going to write that check for us. So that's my general comments. A um, couple of, of quick questions, um, uh, or just uh, actually, like, I guess like only one of the question. Um, the uh, the bus stops. Um, you know, there, there was a comment made that there, the existing bus stops are not um, compliant, which is which is true. Will the buses be stopping in the travel lane, um, and the 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 bulb outs have, are are coming out to the bus in, the, in order to make it compliant? I think that's true. I just want to make sure I'm understanding. 
Yeah, that is what would happen. Mm -hmm. um, our traffic consultant didn't see an issue with that mm -hmm. with regard to to, uh, to traffic flows. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't have much more to say about that, but uh, except that it is it is frequently done that way. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's just to given the volumes and the frequency of the buses that sure. that would be appropriate. Yeah. I'm, I'm not saying that as a negative. I just yeah. wanted to make sure that I understand. I, yeah. I understood it, and I, I think that's the way to go as well. Because um, otherwise, if it's a bus stop that's um, more in, then you need, it needs to be larger, and we we'll, exactly. would lose more parking. So that's true too. Um, yeah. yeah. So I just wanted to make sure that I understood it. Yep. Um, the uh, under art, the under artistic expressions, one of the Artic artistic expressions was crosswalks, and I'm not sure I understood what that exactly would be. I know we have crosswalks, and I appreciate the ladder design everywhere, and the modified ladders that kind of go at an angle. I have seen that in other communities, and I think it looks great. Um, but what are the what are the other artistic expressions having to do with crosswalks? Sure, um, we do have a couple of images that uh, Pamela's finding. There they are. So the Second image is from the left. Oh, I see. Are um, options for, and that's how you can do it just with paint. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Oops. Uh, they incorporate the required striping. So the one on, on the top actually has the two regular bars on each side. The one on the bottom is kind of ingenious. It, it, it incorporates that ladder as part of the design. It's part of a pattern of colors. Mm -hmm. um, so that's how that's handled. You could also, um, you know, with just the regular striping, the two bars, there's plenty of examples of using unit pavers in the crosswalks, whether they're brick or um, what we're showing here. I think uh, one side comment is to, to continue to try to keep all of that special paving consistent. So those crosswalks could be similar to special paving in the paseos mm -hmm. or in the parks or plazas, and so that could carry a theme all the way through. Right, so there's a, different, a couple of different ways to do it. Great, thank you. And then, um, uh, it's good that this slide is up there. I love that, that the, uh, the lighting in the paseos and, and whatnot. However, I am remembering that we do live in San Bruno and it's a little breezy. Um, so just any, any hanging lights would need to take, a, take into effect especially in a Paseo, what's going to focus the wind, um, you know, to make sure that they don't swing around, because I can imagine that would be quite a, uh, quite a show if those were all swinging. <laughs> so um, just, a, just a, something to, to, to consider in the design. And then um, lastly, uh, regarding identity, you know, the, the arches and the, the just the, the, in, the entire identity, um, some of the comments that I heard on uh, the, the walkthrough and in the, um, the uh, Citibank event, um, from residents were to potentially, if there's a if there's an elegant way to do it, incorporate the fact that we're the city with the heart, and that and the, the downtown is the heart of San Bruno. Um, it, it's something to consider. Yes, thank you for bringing that up. If I may add a little comment to that, uh, it's it's described in the draft document, um, but there was actually an interesting conversation comment that came up about what should we really call this thing. So we had started the project assuming the avenue was was the new sort of brand for this. And you already have signs that say the avenue. Um, but that was questioned because some people think of some other anim avenues that I won't mention when you say the avenue. So uh, we definitely recommend, and it's in, it's in the draft document, that there's a whole branding exercise. So it may not be the avenue. It may be something related to city with a heart. Others said, why not just call it downtown? downtown San Bruno, let's just brand it that way. So there's a couple of different uh, ideas that have been mentioned and, and I'm glad you brought that up because I think that is something that needs um, its own process. I don't know if that's a question of hiring a marketing branding consultant or how that gets handled. <laughs> I'm just a landscape architect, but uh, <laughs> there is definitely a, a kind of a need for that that was identified. So in terms of this document, everywhere you see text on those kinds of monuments, um, that that should be clear that that's not the final sort of brand, if you will. Understood. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. That's it for my comments. I appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you. Through the chair. I just want to comment that at one point there was discussion of it being international way. Hmm. That went on for quite some time because of the 
types of restaurants we have in, in the, on that street. Through the chair? Okay. Um, well, first of all, I'm, I'm thoroughly impressed by the amount of work that, and thought that um, our community and staff and the Arts Commission and all the other um, commissions that have really come together um, to put together this report. Um, it's really brought a lot of wonderful ideas and um, one great feedback about the plan. So I'm uh, very thankful for that. Um, I uh, just kind of as an overview, I, I do uh, support the idea of creating, um, if not a formal kids playground space, some sort of space where kids can interact with the landscape in the Centennial Park. Um, it's so near the, the swim school and you know, the ice cream shop and a lot of other places. I'm, I'm excited about the idea of, of families having a, um, a place where younger kids can gather and can interact um, in, within the park. Um, there was an example given in the packet with kind of a, and not amorphous, but it's, yeah, it's like a kind of a concrete site and it, it served both as sculpture but also as a, as a play area. So it, it was kind of um, a multi, multi-use fun uh, feature. Um, I love the idea of trying to integrate an off-street area for the farmer's market, and whether that is at Centennial Park or at the Posey, um, Posey Park, Posey Plaza Park, all the P words. Um, but um, I thought the I idea of integrating um, some whimsy, bringing in art, light, outdoor play games to the paseos and to the public spaces is really fun. I think that's that's the kind of stuff that is, is going to keep people lingering and staying and having conversation and um, making it feel like a place that they really want to be and much less sterile. Um, I did have a question. Just because I'm a newer commissioner, um, I'm, I'm curious, what is the history of planning for the downtown streetscape that seems to be recurring? And um, maybe staff can answer that. Um, I will try my best. I don't believe it has been formally um, recognized in the past. There might be an effort that's been put together. Um, given that I'm actually newer than you, Commissioner Lathin, um, that's kind of my recollection that there has been a lot of effort put in to put the streetscape plan for Cemetery Avenue together. Um, as we put in the staff report, this effort was actually specifically uh, highlighted in the 2009 general plan and then follow up by TCP, which was ad adopted by 2013. So given that we're about six years out, um, there might be other efforts in the past that um, wasn't quite, came to fruition, but this will be the first one that actually has a document that's mm -hmm. going to council for the adoption. I see, okay. Oh yeah, please. Um, I forget who it was I was talking to. I think it, it was somebody on uh, in the city council, I believe, who was, who was here when those pots were installed. Uh, and all that, I think there are people, members of the community, who even think of that as part of this process. Uh, so I just wanted to add that, that there was sort of a, that was an improvement process. And, and I actually, um, believe, I don't have, I think the conversation was, I haven't looked at records, but that that was a, an attempt at solving some utility conflicts and, and, uh, and there was sort of a whole process around that. And I think there are people who remember that and are disappointed in the outcome of, of that actual implementation project. So it goes all the way back to there. Um, just wanted to add that piece of history. Great, thank you, yeah. Um, Let's see. Oh, and um, as my fellow commissioner just mentioned, um, we are a little bit breezy in San Bruno. And I, w I was wondering, and this, this sounds kind of silly, but there were a lot of studies that we read through in this packet. Um, so maybe it's not crazy to ask, but whether or not there was a wind study, is that even a thing? Is that something that's done? Because it definitely is going to affect the usability of our downtown, at least as a dining experience, play experience, farmer's market. That's a really good comment. Um, there are such things. We didn't do that. Um, and I think it is very much worth mentioning, and maybe it's something we can add to the final final document, that further study should be uh, incorporated into the design process. Certainly the engineering, structural engineering as a matter of course, 
uh, we'll, we'll deal, deal with wind loads. Uh, the lights, anything that's hanging, that would undergo some engineering review. So that, that would be done as a matter of course. But from a comfort point of view and making sure that there's enough opportunities to get out of the wind, you know, that was one thing we just noticed sort of anecdotally is that the paseos are actually sh uh, more sheltered from the wind than they are wind tunnels. At least that was mm -hmm. our limited experience. That should be tested. Um, but for certainly for uh, Centennial Park and Posey Park, those would be places where you'd, you'd want to provide wind shelters. So that's a great comment. Okay, yeah. thank you. Through the chair. I have a couple more, but if you yeah. want to jump in on the wind yeah. topic. No? Okay. I'll be, I'll be short. Um, and, oh, it had been mentioned, I think, in, in some previous um, planning commission meetings um, when we have just very generally discussed downtown. Um, there are some areas where there's business waste, restaurant waste on the sidewalk. And I know there's been some discussion about what, there, there not being any other locations for the restaurant to put their waste, but that um, I was wondering if there was going to be some sort of larger uh, solution, whether the city creates a space for them or um, there's different, some sort of trash pickup, but I know there are a couple of restaurants where literally their cooking oil is oozing onto the sidewalk. I'm going to have to rely on my public works staff to think of that one. Um, I, I don't believe that has been... I think the discussion that we have had um, so far are more, li are more or less just the regular trash can in addition to the recycling bin. But we'll definitely take that comment and forward to council um, to also possibly include um, larger oil uh, container and whatnot for the commercial establishment. We may also reach out to Ecology to see how um, that's been currently done and whether or not they would uh, prefer to continue to pick up along San Mateo or maybe at the back street. Okay. Through the, through the chair, just to comment on that. During the, that initial walk down San Mateo Avenue, we observed um, a store owner bringing trash out and putting it into the, the um, city receptacles on the street. Okay. Well, so, definitely I mean, it's, it, it, obviously, we, you know, just to, to echo um, the, the comment, you know, they need to have their own, <laughs> their own trash cans and they hopefully can't not, won't necessarily be in the street or on the sidewalk, especially if we're going to do all of this. Yeah, I, I think that um, perhaps uh, just space needs to be allotted to them, whether or not, yeah, they're okay. just made specially out of the, out of the walkway. But um, the last question I had was, I know that um, uh, WRT has created a, an estimate for the amount of cost um, but as I continue to scroll down through the different studies, it, if you could clarify for me, there was a lot of talk, and I, this, I got lost when we were talking about water supply changing from a six inch diameter to an eight inch, and I kind of, my brain went fuzzy, and I said, I'm gonna trust the people who know about this. But um, I did start seeing cost numbers. Is that, is the infrastructure that, that would, that was mentioned in these studies going to be in addition to the cost that, that you estimated? No, it's all incorporated. It's all included. Okay. Um, there, the reason, my understanding, and correct me if I'm wrong, but there's actually new pavement currently on, on, in the roadway, and the reason for that is that there was recently a major infrastructure improvement project. To, uh, I think uh, major water mains were replaced, I believe. Maybe some were relocated, which is also why we can now be more confident about proposing where trees can go. There are a couple of places where there's still some conflicts. So uh, one thing that's included is, is um, moving one stretch of water line. Um, that definitely needs further study of, of feasibility and whether that's worth the cost, but it was one, one little, one place in the street where that was still conflicting with trees. Um, I believe that may be the only subsurface infrastructure improvement that is associated with this project, and it is incorporated into one of the tiers. Uh, I can't remember exactly where. Um, and then the rest of the infrastructure would be the green infrastructure elements for stormwater, and it's all included. Great, thank you so much. That's all I have. Through the chair. 
I just wanted to comment. I recently did some um, pretty uh, extensive traveling outside of uh, internationally. I was in Africa, actually. And in some areas that were, um, we were instructed for to be careful and, uh, for safety. But this area that we went into that was not considered safe, what really drew the community was these alleyways. And they did call them alleys. And, and sometimes you change the name and they can't catch on. But Paseo is uh, it's in Spanish for, for a, you know, kind of a breezeway. But the one thing that, I, that was extremely um, uh, exciting for people, and there were lots and lots of people in these little alleyways, was the artwork. And my, I have two grandchildren that are artists, 9 and 11, and they are really uh, amazing artists. And they absolutely did their homework in advance and wanted to go to these places to see what this art was like. And it was done by locals, but some by children. Uh, some had themes. It wasn't just um, at random, but it was relevant to today. And so it had movement. It wasn't uh, created for historical reasons. There were some areas for that. But it really, they took the time to create lighting for it, focus lighting. Some, they even created a darkness because that was the feel they wanted to create. But it really uh, took away any fear or worry or any, any of those things because it was such a focus that you actually wanted to go down each pathway on an ongoing basis. You couldn't do them all in one night, but you want to come back and come back and come back. So it came to mind as you were talking about the lighting and the, and the art in that area. And sometimes we get caught up in art. Well, I have to echo um, my colleague um, here that Centennial Park you know, after a while, you can only go to one museum and see it over and over and over before you say, oh, well, you know, maybe it's every three years. And that's what it feels like on that uh, Centennial Park. It really is just pretty to look at, if that. And it serves zero community purpose other than to enjoy it. I don't want to minimize or, but it does not, it's not vibrant. Uh -huh. And so my thought is that if we can look at these, these paseos, uh, and and bring more to them than just um, an entrance to the parking lot. And so it becomes that vibrancy. Thank you. Questions? Oh, one more thing. I do have um, pictures and uh, of, that, of that, where we were. And so if you have any interest, feel free to contact me. Absolutely. Or you can look them up. I'm sure they're online. I was going to ask you for pictures. I'll give you my card. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Do you charge a fee for that? <laughs> <laughs> I'll donate it to the, I'll be the first donation to this um, project. <laughs> so I have a, a couple of comments and questions. Um, in the streetscape plan, I'm not quite sure what page this is, but there's a design that says baseline furnishings and improvements. I'll just show you. Um, on page two of the staff report, there's discussion about the links for pedestrian, bicyclists, transit riders, and motorists. And I understand this is a conceptual design, so just let me know if, I'm, if this is just not the right plan yet. But um, I see that the bicyclists are still sharing the same street as the cars. So would that mean that there's going to be, at some point, the plan is that there's an actual bicycle pathway? Right. No, this is the right time to ask that question, okay. first of all. Uh, no, there would not be a bike lane. There's not... Um, well, there, I don't believe there's room for the bike lane. Uh, so what's proposed is what's called sharrows, which is those markings that say that bikes and, and, uh, and motor vehicles can share the street. Um, they are relatively wide lanes. You know, there's no proposal to narrow the, the lanes. You know, some streetscape plans are all about widening the sidewalks. You actually have reasonably wide sidewalks here. Um, so when you don't have room for a bike lane, the next best thing is to have a wider travel lane, uh, which you do have here. And so generally that was, and also it's a pretty slow moving street, so generally that was acceptable to the bike community. Mm -hmm. And it's also just, there's not, uh, you know, if, if we wanted to really in implement a bike lane, you'd have to narrow the sidewalks and so on. Okay. So. And then uh, along the same line of um, just transportation, is there any location, I guess, near Caltrain where there's a planned um, pickup drop off for all the shared ride services like Ubers and Lyfts? That wasn't explicitly incorporated. Um, 
think that's an excellent question. Um, one thought that is occurring to me is that along Posey Park right now, the street does get wider. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I don't believe there's on-street parking there currently. So that may be a location for that. But we didn't explicitly incorporate that. That would be, yeah. that'd be an interesting thing. I'll ask our um, transportation consultant about Great. that. Great, thank you. Because yeah. we have a lot of Uber and Lyft drivers yeah. right now that are just driving back and forth uh, on San Mateo Avenue. Um, the other question I had is on page three of the staff report, there's discussion about the Art Deco to Modernists, which I have to say I love. Um, we just took a tour on Saturday. The San Mateo County Historical Society hosted a tour of San Bruno and its history. Um, and so one of the questions I had, I think, is more maybe for staff, is does San Bruno have a historic preservation ordinance? Because they pointed out buildings that have just really been dilapidated. Actually, the tour guide specifically said, too bad that this hasn't been taken care of. Um, do we have a historic preservation ordinance as we move forward with our downtown plan? That is an excellent question. Unfortunately, we do not have the historic preservation ordinance in place right now. OK. Maybe that's something to discuss at a later time. OK. Um, greening, I know um, I don't. You had said, you know, are there any tree people? I'm definitely not a tree people person here, but I do know that trees cause a lot of maintenance later on. And so, and you did touch on that, but I'm just curious to know how the trees were selected. Um, are, is there a plan to, I saw what type of trees they were. I think it was like an, a Chinese elm. Uh, is, are there plans to look into native trees? The Chinese elm is, is was selected for a couple of reasons. One is that it is currently on your pre-approved street tree list. Okay. Um, but not only that, we, we do think it's a, a really appropriate tree. It gets it's the size you want. It's the open structure that you want. It provides a lot of shade, but it's not dark. It's deciduous, um, which you know, help. I mentioned that sort of that that could be nice in the winter time if you want to put lights in them. Uh, there's something a little bit counterintuitive that actually a deciduous tree um, requires a little bit less leaf cleanup because evergreen trees drop their leaves kind of constantly year round, and at least deciduous trees they do it all at once. <laughs> you go in and you clean those up, so they do tend to actually be easier from that leaf litter point of view. Um, we actually selected the Chinese elm because when the um, aperture was getting completed, they couldn't um, source the original tree that was uh, specified for that. And mm -hmm. so um, the city staff asked us to, to help pick a replacement tree for that. So we went through a whole process of looking at what would be appropriate. And they did plant the Chinese elm already in front of the, the, uh, the aperture building. Mm -hmm. Um, so it would be consistent with that, at least, for what it's worth. Mm -hmm. um, we're pretty confident that that's, that's an appropriate tree. I think there's um, more flexibility in the, uh, in the accent tree that we actually are identifying for those um, mid-block bulb outs. We picked something that's appropriate for the climate that's flowering. Um, but that could certainly be any number of things. I think that could be an appropriate place for maybe a native tree. Okay. Um, native tree, there aren't that many native trees that are really great as street trees, okay. uh, is the short answer. But I actually do think that you could bring that in. We didn't think of it, but now that you mention it, that could actually be a really nice accent tree, maybe a native oak or um, uh, California Buckeye or something like that. Yeah, so we'll, nice. we'll certainly consider that. Okay. Yeah. I think maybe we can um, make it more explicit in the final plan document that that's an opportunity for more study okay. and that it might be a place for native trees to be brought in. That would be great. Yeah. Thank you. To the chair, um, just to, uh, while you're on the, t the topic of the trees, just to, as a, a comment of something that I read in the report that uh, just for the, the um, the public's benefit who may not get into every detail of the report, that the trees selected, I believe it's stated that uh, part of the selection process was to ensure that the trees would, at maturity, grow up and then out at a high enough, um, the Thank canopies you. are high enough so that folks who are walking and folks who are driving can still see the names of all the businesses. So I just wanted to make sure that, I just wanted to get that on the on the record because it's you. super important on yep. a that avenue really like important. this. 
Thank you. Um, for the, tr the lighting, I just want to say, I know that I think it was on page five. I felt like the, the tree lighting, this one that's the bottom, second over to, from the left, it was, I, I don't, I think that was referred to as seasonal lighting. And I just want to say for the, almost the same reasons as like the wind issue, I actually think that it's quite majestic and I, I don't see it as seasonal. I think it's quite nice and it would provide a really nice ambiance in our downtown. Um, so just a suggestion on how different people might interpret the lighting. And then if you wanted something seasonal, you know, a very European thing would be to hang, you know, the lights from one building to another across the San Mateo Avenue. It's not that wide. And that would be actually a really nice way to celebrate the holidays and say it's uh, holiday season. But then we go back to the wind issue. But I, I did just want to say that I didn't see that as seasonal. I thought they were quite majestic. Um, Can the, I clarify your comment there? I'm sorry. Um, yeah. Just that that may be permanent, you mean? That, that mm -hmm. yeah. You might right. be do, just do that on a permanent basis. Right, yeah. like as one option, that could be permanent. Mm -hmm. um, as far as the, let's see. Oh yeah, so I, I had. A, I also just wanted to echo what the other said. I, personally, I'm not crazy about the avenue as being the name. Um, I do like the nod to um, the San Francisco Chronicle article that highlighted the diversity in the downtown. So like Commissioner Johnson said, this idea of like, you know, welcome to the street of American dreams or something along those lines. That's not just a nod to the diversity, but also a nod to the San Francisco airport that was originally the San Bruno airport. Um, I think it's just a nice kind of um, a, a nice relationship that we can form with the community. Um, and I did want to ask if the arc that is shown on page 66, um, is it possible instead of saying, you know, that like whatever the name ends up being at the end, the avenue, would it be able, would it be able to have something on the other side? So one way is a welcome, right? And the side right behind it is saying thank you. And then having the same arc at the end of the street also saying welcome, going north maybe, and then, or going west, I should say, and then thank you for visiting, coming the other way. So kind of having a consistency, but a very welcoming sense when you're driving into and out of San Mateo Avenue. Um, let's see. Oh, I didn't hear that, sorry. Um, I wanted to ask for the consultants or staff. Um, my understanding is that in other cities, there are certain areas that are currently paid for by the business. So for example, a parklet would be the responsibility of the owner. The owner would get the permits and be responsible for the maintenance. So is that pretty typical? Is that something we have to wait for $20 million you know, to start this project? Um, I can clarify that slightly. So the scope right now is only targeting at the public right of way. Um, it will not be funded by the pri private property owner. Um, typically, parklet is a use of a public right-of-way for the benefit of the private business. I've seen um, other jurisdictions that do a partnership with a private entity to create that parklet um, because the scope right now is only focused on the public right-of-way. The funding would have to come from general fund. But if the city, um, the a business, um, downtown business merchants want to partner up with the city to do something on the um, storefront or mm -hmm. other area on their property, they can certainly borrow the design guidance and then apply it on their storefront. And would that be a variance then? Would that be? Depending that on what they're trying to do. So okay. it could be as simple as um, cosmetic upgrade mm -hmm. or it could be as much as um, you know, a, a brand new elevation. Really depends on what they're trying to do. Um, and we could also, the city does not have a downtown facade program. Other cities may have a downtown facade program. So that's probably what you're thinking along the line. So that was going to be another question I had. So we do not have a downtown facade program. Unfortunately, <laughs> we don't. Okay. Um, so then if the merchants did come to the city, the city would be willing to work with them on a project like that? Like I said, it's it really depends on the scope. Okay. Um, along the same lines, I, I, I guess what, what I just thought so you understand the context or where I'm going with this is um, that the city has had a hard time with financing, obviously, and we were in a deficit last year. And so when we're looking at a project this size, there are so many needs right now in San Bruno. So how, many, how much of this can we um, make part of a grander plan? So for example, the arts, when you look at the paseos, 
um, why couldn't a group like the Interact Club, a group of young high school kids, apply for a um, community foundation grant? And then with that community foundation grant, if you got Tandy's approval, paint the first mural right there in that paseo. Um, why couldn't they apply for, you know, a, through the San Mateo Arts Commission, a grant and then paint another paseo, maybe another group in San Bruno? Um, is there anything stopping us from moving forward now with the with something like that being more creative and exploring other options? I don't believe so at this point. Um, as we mentioned earlier, there's no identified uh, funding source to implement this plan. So um, I think we will welcome all suggestions when okay. council is, a, is considering how funding will be provided to implement all of the desi design guidelines. Okay. And then um, is the is staff right now as we're looking at the conceptual design aperture when I walked through Aperture, um, they, I noticed that they redid the sidewalks. And then 111 Huntington will be, I'm, I'm sure, redoing the sidewalks as well. Is staff requiring that the sidewalks all be consistent so that it does, it, it, we don't have to redo the sidewalks later for consistency so that everyone has the same guidelines? Michael Smith, uh, Planning Department staff. So, I mean, I worked on the 111 San Bruno project, and it did call for special paving um, in, a, in a precise area of the project where they were bulbing out near the corner of San Bruno Avenue and Huntington Avenue. Um, but as far as the rest of the sidewalk abutting this site, it would be matching city standards. Um, so, um, so there would be that continuity in, in the project to match with what we already have. But the city standards. Um they're not, are they a certain look, a certain style, a certain texture? I, I, I just want to, so, I'm, so that I'm clear. Uh, I don't want, since this, I don't want the city to have to reinvest in a sidewalk to then create a consistent sidewalk to be consistent with the plan that we're looking at now. So as we're redeveloping, which under Measure N, the part of Measure N was to trigger redevelopment, in, including downtown, is there a plan in place to say to, to, to owners of these properties, this is the sidewalk that we expect you to have? Because this is the sidewalk that everybody else is going to have. Well, it, yeah, that would, that would be a little bit difficult to implement on a project by project basis, because um, we wouldn't be certain that we would get the rest of the downtown to conform. And it could be some time before that portion of, the pro of this plan moves forward. So. Um, I mean, that might be a conversation that, that we need to have internally as staff, but um, at least on the surface, I, I don't think it would be a good idea to have 111 implement a sidewalk from, from this plan um, without knowing um, if, if it's going to be implemented for the rest of the downtown. Okay. Yeah, if I may, can I mm -hmm. add one yeah. thought to that? Uh, I took a peek at what was done at the aperture mm -hmm. and my sense, I was actually just in my car, um, my sense was it was more or less in conformance with what's there now. Mm -hmm. uh, so unfortunately the truth is if that is to be made consistent with the future uh, project, it would have to be redone. The problem is that this plan doesn't get into that level of detail. So there's still some unknowns. For example, would we do the permeable paving or not? That's even just a funding question. Uh, we did not get into the level of detail of what the actual score pattern is and how, you know, whether it's a three foot square grid or some other pattern of scoring. Mm -hmm. So there's just really not enough development right now to, to implement it in that kind of piecemeal way. Um, I think I understand the comment and the question, and I think just the reality is um, the timing may be off as development needs to build new sidewalks. Mm -hmm. This plan may just simply not be advanced enough at that point. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. And I would just make that suggestion to staff maybe to, to think about that because sidewalks are so expensive to repave later. So if that's a possibility as, we're, as we finalize this plan. Um, as a community. Well, as, as Jacob mentioned that, um, I think the plan offers um, options mm -hmm. um, and it's for a council to adopt a plan and ultimately based on the amount of budget then public work staff will actually pick the most appropriate um, design to go ahead and implement and we'll definitely take that um, in, in mind that try to minimize the cost as much as possible. Okay, great. Through the chair. Uh -huh. 
So just a clarification, uh, sure, Ms. Uh, Ms. Lynn. When you said property owners, do you mean, uh, I mean, when you said business owners, did you mean property owners or owners of the business that don't own the property or both? Or? For the sidewalks? Mm -hmm. Oh, the whoever's developing the property. So whoever's paying to develop, which is normally the owners. The owners, okay. Yeah. So. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Um, the, I just wanted to touch on the Centennial Playground. Um, I wanted to suggest maybe looking at a potential playground structure um, in front of the Citibank location. I, I think that my concern is that I, because Genevin goes right into that space, it just honestly sounds, seems dangerous to me. Mm -hmm. uh, we have so much traffic going there. And then Florida Park hopefully will be built, and that's going to be right behind um, the Aperture Building, so there will be a full playground, but I, I agree with um, Commissioner Lifting that it would be nice to have something um, for kids or for family, and maybe maybe right in front of Citibank, there's these benches there, it's a nice place to sit, but it's actually quite a large space, and if possible, creating some kind of play structure there. Um, as far as the Centennial Plaza goes, um, I just want to advocate for looking into uh, options. I love all the options that came up tonight. The idea of the kiosk, um, Commissioner Hamilton, uh, Commissioner Morgan actually brought up the brick wall to screen off the parking lot. I love that idea. Uh, I love the idea of you know potential food trucks and open space. But I also want to advocate for the potential of an actual building, uh, like the Peninsula Art Museum is looking for a permanent home. Um, there are locations that will come up that are opportunities for the city of San Bruno that might have private funding. Um, that I just think the city of San Bruno should be looking at, not necessarily just keeping it an open space, but maybe actually building something there that will also attract people to our downtown. Um, as far as the contingency, I just wanted to ask if the 35%, you said that's pretty standard, so that's almost $5 million. And do, do, do cities normally use that? It's at a conceptual design level, yeah, that oh. is. That is what we use. Okay. Yeah. Um, this is for staff. Does do any of the impact fees that began May first pay or go into anything related to the downtown streetscape plan? I don't believe so. The um, I was informed that the project was the the funding for the plan was identified in the nexus study. But I don't believe any of the impact fee that you're talking about, the mm -hmm. ordinance that just came into effect, right. um, I don't believe that covers for any of the implementation of this plan itself. Okay, thank you. Um, I just wanted to highlight the garbage cans. I know this has come up a couple times tonight, but I also wanted to say that if we are dreaming, um, then I wanna bring up that there are new garbage cans that have come out that apparently identify when the garbage can is almost full and then provide a, like an email or a text message to the company to come and actually clean out the garbage cans um, so that they don't overflow. And my understanding is the companies who do this only lease, they don't, right now they're not up for purchase. But if we're thinking long term um, and we're gonna save, you know, to, to purchase something like this or to lease it, I, I think we should be looking at all of our options. And we should also be looking at um, not just recycling, but compost. A lot of cities now have compost bins as well. So just a suggestion. Um, and let me just see if I have any other notes here. Oh, um, bike racks. I just wanna say, suggest that bike racks are another opportunity for artistic design. The one that's in the picture is just, it looks like a shower hook. Uh -huh. So, um, you know, I've seen some pretty neat uh, bicycle um, hook designs, like bikes or people or, anyway, so just an, another opportunity to bring something unique and some character to our downtown. Um, and, and lastly, just kind of a reminder about the pathway I mentioned at the last commission meeting, but using art as a pathway through downtown. So by painting murals on doors, by painting murals on um, sides of buildings, so not limiting the art to just paseos, but really throughout, touching, you know, throughout, th touching downtown with art throughout your passage, right, as you're walking through. So using art, not just lights, but to connect all of downtown. And otherwise, I just wanna thank you guys. I also attended um, the public event drop-in. I thought it was really well organized. There was a lot of people there. Uh, and you guys have done, I think you've done a really great job getting everyone's ideas into this plan. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Any other?
comments or questions? No? Okay. So with that said, do you have any anything else for us? No, I just want to reiterate how much a pleasure it's been uh, getting everybody's input. Your comments were all very useful. So thank you, very thoughtful. And it's just been a pleasure. Staff has been wonderful to work with. This has been a, a really nice project. So Great. thank you. Thank you. So with that said, we will move to, let's see, public comment. On, I'm reading the agenda right now. So we'll move on to item. Public comment on this item will follow the, oh, is there any public comment on just that presentation? Because it is on the bottom. We did them for our general public comment. Oh, just the item. So is there any public comment just on this item? Okay, so we're gonna close public comment. Item 6A, items from staff. Um, before you move on, um, actually, I do need you to take a motion to uh, uh, formally oh, receive yeah. the report okay. and also um, provide the comments that we are, have noted and afford them to City Council. Perfect. Do we have a motion? I'll make a motion that we receive the um, that we receive the report and uh, accept the public comment and the uh, committee comments that were um, recorded tonight. Thank you. Do we have a second? A second. Okay. Um, all, everyone in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? No. So the motion carries. Thank you. Um, so going on to item number six, um, I am the new planning and housing manager. I have the pleasure of serving you. A um, little about my background. I've been in the planning field for roughly 20 years. Prior to joining City San Bruno, I was with the city of Gilroy for about 18 months. And prior to that, I've been with uh, the county of Santa Clara for about 17 years. Um, prior to that, I was with actually an architectural firm and whatnot. So um, this is somewhat a familiar field for me. My dad was an architect, so I grew up with the hat and the scale in my hand. I'm very fortunate to be in this position. I'm loving every day that I'm in the city and I'm looking forward to be working with you closely. Um, I will be transitioning Darcy out of this position. I will be your liaison for planning commission matters. I will be your coordination and management and uh, preparation and the release of the agenda staff report and the many minutes. Looking forward to all of the meetings um, ahead that we will have this year. With that said, um, I would like to remind you that we do need to select the September 12th Architectural Review Committee members. Okay. I'm, I'm available. Okay. I'm available. I need one more. <laughs> oh, who, who is it so far? I'm sorry. I have Commissioner Johnson and Commissioner Morgan. Okay. Let me look at my camera. Okay. I, I can do it. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And um, we'll let you know if um, we will have a meeting and how many um, items that's gonna be going on, okay. um, probably right around Labor Day weekend. Um, the next item is that we would, uh, with the res uh, resignation of um, previous vice chair, we also need the commission to appoint a new committee member for the Recreation and Aquatic Center Advisory Committee member. And I would like to remind you that there is a RAC meeting coming up this Thursday at six o'clock um, at City Hall. Um, and we'll be going over the project status. The application has just been submitted to the city last Friday. It's moving at a very rapid pace. So I would like um, a volunteer for that as well. You know, I actually, maybe you can talk more about this committee because I wasn't here when the, when the committee members were selected, or at least I don't believe I was. Can you just talk a little bit about the commitment and then what exactly the charge is for this subcommittee? Um, correct me if I'm wrong, Michael. I believe the charge um, was put together by the city manager to shepherd um, the, um, the project alone. So if you may be familiar, it's funded through the PG&E funding um, from the explosion site. And um, there's a commitment to complete the project and involves the uh, city parks, um, I think the Arts and, Com Arts and Cultural Commission and Public Works and Planning as well. And because this is a city funded project, um, we, uh, we have um, retained an outside architect to prepare the drawing, the, the contract and whatnot. Uh, we also have a CEQA consultant that's preparing a CEQA document. 
So this committee's charge is basically making sure that everything is put in place and moving forward at a relatively um, reasonable pace and get to the finish line as early as possible. Um, we do have a planning consultant that's working for us as the project manager who's shepherding the project. Um, that's as far as I know. Um, do, you, do you have anything to add? Uh, only as far as time commitment. Um, you're pr so far, it's been about one meeting a month, um, but as the, the project is getting closer and closer to um, daylight, um, those meetings may pick up. So, but I, it would be hard for me to tell you exactly how much they would be, but you could expect it to be more than just once a month. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And, and, uh, when do you expect that to be over with that commitment? Um, so we roughly discussed this with the consultant actually today. We received a planning application, like, as I mentioned last week. It's going to have to go through a review and go to the planning commission for um, entitlement at the same time with the EIR. We're looking at a roughly seven to eight month before the final ER could be definitely ready for adoption. Um, so given that it came in mid-August, we're looking at maybe next spring. No, maybe next summer, next spring, next summer-ish, as the uh, completion of the entitlement process. Um, I don't know if this committee will go on to look at the construction document. That will be something I can verify and get back to you, because it will go on to the construction uh, phase to, to, to oversee the actual um, building um, of this structure. And, and I don't know if that's part of the charger. Through the chair. Um, I'm serving on this committee, and it has been a really neat experience um, for anybody who plans to utilize the rec center um, or have any neighbors that are going to. It is um, wonderful seeing, I mean, really, the head of every department in the city is comes together and collaborates um, on on this incredible, incredibly big project. So, it's fun. Come join me. <laughs> Can't, what did I say? I, I'd, I'd be willing to, but I'd like to check with my husband um, first. Um, but so if that is okay with everybody, I don't know if anybody, because I don't see people jumping. <laughs> yeah. So I would be happy to, but I do need to just make sure I have okay. time management. I have the time, to be quite honest. As I mentioned, there will be a critical meeting this coming Thursday. Yeah, this Thursday I have a work conflict. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, as Commissioner Lifton probably will see that this is going to be a critical meeting uh, for this process as we are actually talking about the entitlement for the first time. This, this will be the first submittal. What time is that meeting? Six o'clock. I should also note that I, I'm actually, of all the meetings, I'm not going to be available for this one as well. So it'd be extra important to have um, yeah. my fellow commissioners there. Okay, you don't have to decide right now. Um, it would be nice <laughs> to let me know as soon as possible, but I do want to put it out there that will be a meeting um, this coming Thursday. Okay, and I, I will do my best to attend. I do have a work meeting that starts at four, so it just depends on whether that meeting ends in time to get me to the other okay. meeting. So for anyone else who might be interested, yeah. let me know. Um, I do have the consultant's um, contact so that we can pair you up to kind of bring you up to speed. Thank you, Thank and you. that's all I have. Um, so the next item on the agenda is public comment on items not on the agenda. Seeing as how there is none, um, items from members and subcommittee reports. I have a comment. So um, uh, these are comments that I had. It has, it has to do with San Mateo Avenue, but um, because it's not about the public right of way, I, I did not um, say it earlier because that was that's not in the purview. But um, I just want to uh, comment that w with this, with the streetscape hopefully moving forward, um, we do need to take more action on San Mateo Avenue in terms of um, f for the businesses to maintain their, their properties. Um, you know, I know we, ha we have code enforcement. I don't believe that we're doing enough. Um, and I do believe that there are, th we have, um, tools at our disposal that we could enact to improve the, the, um, what's, what's happening down there. And, you know, the, the problems also include, um, you know, vacant uh, storefronts that have no intention, the owners have no intention of attracting a tenant. Um, they're, you know, holding uh, uh, real estate just as an investment and just let it, let it 
deteriorate, waiting for the market to go up, and then we'll sell. So, you know, there are, you know, we could, you know, enact vacancy taxes. There are uh, other things we can do. One idea in particular that I would like to see us explore if possible would be to um, establish a special zone just for San Mateo Avenue so that we can implement slightly different rules just for San Mateo Avenue, have a higher standard for, um, for code enforcement in terms of uh, maintaining storefronts and not allowing them to go into disrepair, and perhaps even in, in enacting fines for, um, uh, for building owners who ignore repeated warnings to um, bring their, bring their um, building facades up to code. Because if we, you know, if, if we were able to find $20 million and do everything that it says in this plan, if the buildings look like crap, it's really not gonna, it, it's, it's not gonna bring it all together. Um, one thing that we could do as well in order to kind of balance the, the you know, to be the, the, the carrot to go along with the, the, the sticks would be to, um, as part of that, if you're a, if you're a building owner in this um, new zone, maybe if you're if you need to do facade improvements and you need permits, you go to the front of the line, and maybe you, maybe we waive the fees. We can you know it could be a two-way street where we make it as easy as possible to maintain your properties on San Mateo Avenue, and make them pretty, um, and encourage people to do that. So I just I just strongly encourage. Um, <clears throat> Uh, staff to come up with solutions to, to look at the buildings as well. Thank you. Uh, through the chair, I echo what uh, Commissioner Hamilton said, and also they have planters outside their buildings that are just bereft of any plants, and they look awful. They're just like collectors for garbage, and I think they should be in, uh, made to keep pr proper planting available there or, or on show. As, as Commissioner Robbins says, most of the, a lot of the properties there are in a deplorable state, and they should be get special treatment or special attention. Through the chair, uh, when an applicant comes before the commission and they're opening up a new business, part of it is um, there are conditions of approval that they're required to do this. It's just the enforcement of it all, right? Yeah. And so it's not new to them, but once you let it go. What happens, it becomes the norm, and then they feel punished rather than meeting the expectation and the high standard. Um, years go by, and yet enforcement is not so easy because it's a demand on staff as well, but it, it is a situation, so I, I do support the comments by my colleagues. So the Chair, just for clarification, um, I was reminded by city attorney that if an item that is not on the public agenda, that needs to be added for future agenda, um, it's a three-step process. So this conversation will be first a written comment sent to me, and then we'll put on the next month agenda to vote on it, and then you could deliberate at the following month. I don't think, I could be wrong, I don't think we're asking for action to come back to us. I think this is a this is a commentary that's based on the report that we heard tonight. Okay. Um, I, correct me if I'm wrong. But I, I mean, mean I would be, be I would be action, I would be more than happy to <laughs> write to write you yeah. a, a note in, with uh, articulating what my ideas are in terms of what I what I just kind of glossed over. I'm more than happy to write you a note and Okay. And we, we can, can definitely talk, we can talk about vote on it next month about talking about it. Sure. Right. Um, and also clarification mm -hmm. is, would you like staff to include this discussion as part of the comments forwarding on to council when they're considering the plan? I think so. I don't, well. They're, they're, they're kind of related. I mean, they're, they're related, but I, I, but I do understand that the streetscape is not, doesn't, inc doesn't okay. include, okay. it's only for the public right of way. So right. while they're related, I wouldn't, I definitely would never want to slow this process yeah. down okay. for this other thing that's, just as important, but not really, but not directly related. Okay. So, I, I definitely hear the urgency, and also when I support um, the commotion by the commission to do something for the downtown. It's just that it's not being listed on the agenda, so I'm a little hesitant to either provide any feedback of. I of wasn't expecting any feedback. I know this is this is for this is, this is comments, and it's not on the it's not it wasn't on the agenda, so I wouldn't expect any feedback tonight. I appreciate Thank that. You. Just wanted to get that process going. Any other questions or comments from the commission? Okay. Um, with that said, it is now 8.56 and we are adjourned.
And I don't have the little sticks, but we're adjourned. <laughs> Thank you.